across the fence, we're gearing up for the 2016 Vermont Farm Show. It's the state's largest agricultural showcase, celebrating Vermont's rural heritage and highlighting today's food producers. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. It's said that the annual Farm Show has something for everyone. That's true again this year, whether you're a farmer or a consumer. The doors on the 85th Annual Farm Show open this coming Tuesday, January 26th at the Champlain Valley Exposition in Essex Junction. The three-day event features Consumer Night on Wednesday. It's a chance to see, taste, and buy the best of Vermont during the buy local market. And the Farm Show wraps up on Thursday, highlighted by the annual Dairy Farmers Appreciation Banquet. For more details, I'm joined by the Farm Show Vice President and Manager Jackie Folsom. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for asking me. I can't believe it's time to talk about this again already. Winter is finally here, <laughs> and I'm hoping the bad weather is this week instead of next. <laughs> now, is there a way to sum up what the Farm Show is or what it's all about? You know, I think it's a great big Vermont homecoming for farmers in particular and for consumers who like to attend and find out what's new. We're often looking at other farm shows in the area and they are full of seminars and workshops and we've tried that with our folks. They just like to come and talk and see people get out of the barn and get out of the house in the winter and just enjoy meeting people and seeing folks again. Now there's uh, 85 years of Vermont tradition in the annual show. Can you share some of the history and what the farm show has meant over the years? Sure. It actually began in the 1930s and it was down in Burlington at the old YMCA building. Um, there was a two-year hiatus during World War II so some people question whether it's the 85th or, or the 83rd, <laughs> but we'll, we'll say the 85th. Um, it grew uh, from the promotion of maple and dairy and the big potato industry that was actually um, quite well run and, and well involved during that time. In the 1940s, we moved it down to Barrie, where many people remember right. it with, with fondness, and some with not so much fondness because of the facilities and the parking. And five years ago, we moved it up to Champlain Valley Exposition, and it's just grown incrementally from there. Now, Vermont and Vermont Agriculture have changed a lot in the past 85 years. What has the farm show sort of evolved into today? I think that uh, when the farm show began, of course, it was dairy and, and maple predominantly, and now we've segued into a lot of the diversity that you'll find uh, throughout the state. We host a lot of different uh, programs and association meetings during the event. Uh, and the contest piece, I think, has been the biggest piece that's changed. In the 1930s, there were a lot of home dem groups and a lot of people that were doing canning. Uh, right now, we've changed the contest for this year to feature five that are hosted by agricultural associations. And those five contests will be hay, fiber, maple, honey and Christmas trees. And so if you've grown a bumper pumpkin crop, which I've heard a lot of people have this year, unfortunately we won't have those, but we will have all those associations hosting the contest entries and really trying to make an educational process out of this. We're hoping to find staff that can rejuvenate the contest for next year. Now I was looking through the, the guide and of course, you know, we were talking about variety, the Christmas tree growers, maple producers, beekeepers, a lot of diversity in agriculture now. There certainly is and a couple of the things we're looking at to, um, to do differently, particularly in the contest, and to try to get more people involved is to uh, really open up to have the agricultural associations and the forestry associations come into the fold. I think forestry um, is something that, that is not often thought of as far as agriculture, but of course you have the sugar makers that are a big part of the farm industry, mm -hmm. um, and the farmers are also very involved in the solar industry. So those are some different and new things that are popping up at the farm show. It's also a great way for consumers, people who are just maybe mildly interested in some of the products that are being produced, to really see them and see the people who make them. Absolutely, not just for consumer night, but I, I think that they sh no one should be intimidated by coming to the farm show. It's, a, it's almost like a big homecoming party for everybody, and that includes everybody in the state of Vermont. When you consider how few people are involved in producing food, fiber, and uh, forest products, it's really imperative that consumers uh, who don't normally interact with farmers come in and see what we're all about. You can see our new technology. Technology. You can talk to folks um, who might get you interested in becoming a, a backyard honeybee member uh, or grow a Christmas tree because uh, farming is not um, not something that should be taken lightly. It's very hard work and it's a business. And so we try to, to convey that to our guests, both farms and consumers. Well, like any business, agriculture requires investment and infrastructure. Tell us about some of the vendors that are featured in this farm show. So we will have um, three robotic milkers this year, th uh, all different sizes, so they can accommodate larger or smaller farms. We have four lending institutions. We have 10 ag associations that are coming. Um, we have a, a, just a variety of all different 
types of uh, seed vendors, feed dealers, um, large and small animals. Uh, so, so come in and check out what we have available. Well, Vermont's Agency of Agriculture, Food and Markets is a big part of the Farm Show, and joining us now is Christina Sweet, who is a Senior Agriculture Development Coordinator with the agency. Thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. For the fifth year, the Farm Show will include Consumer Night. Let's talk a little bit about what that is. All right, well, Consumer Night will be held on Wednesday, January 27th from 4 to 7, and it's a chance to see, try, and buy the best of Vermont agricultural products, everything from food and beverages to handmade crafts. Why is that important? It's important because it's a chance, as Jackie mentioned, for consumers to meet the producers themselves and to learn about their agricultural stories. And it's a chance to really see the depth and breadth of what Vermont has to offer all in one place. And you brought some samples? <laughs> we did bring some samples. We have some samples of what will be available from our 46 vendors at Consumer Night this year. We have some cheese from Shelburne Farms, soups from Scream and Ridge Farm, and those soups will actually be available hot and ready to eat, as well as ready to take home. We have some fresh spinach, which you normally might think you can't get in Vermont That's in January, right. but we have a number of producers who are now growing in the greenhouses fresh produce. And we also have coffee and tea from Vermont Artisan, and we have some fudge, can't forget about dessert, <laughs> and we'll also have some agricultural products like these adorable felted slippers oh, those are from Ashgro Farm in Jericho. <laughs> so what's planned for this year's Consumer Night? Well, Consumer Night actually consists of two events. The first is the Buy Local Market, and the second is the Capital Cook-Off, which is a cooking competition between the Vermont State Senate, the Vermont House, and the Agency of Agriculture. So those three teams will compete in a Iron Chef-style cooking competition to feature a variety of local ingredients and also a special secret ingredient that will be announced at 515. And they are, their final dishes will be judged by a panel of local food celebrities. And for this year, we'll be actually offering samples so that consumers themselves can vote for the public pick. Oh, I think that's a great idea. There's also a raffle? There is. This year, for every $10 purchase that you make at the market, you'll be able to enter the raffle. And so the more purchases you make, the more times you can enter and you can win a prize package from Ski Vermont including two lift tickets, tickets to the Vermont Brewers Festival courtesy of Kingdom Brewing or tickets to the Vermont Cheesemakers Festival. That's amazing because those events sell out very quickly. They do. They are hard to get into. And so there's a lot of fun to be had on Consumer Night, but there's also a serious side. Why is it important to Vermont food producers and processors to take part in this? Well, it's a really great opportunity for producers and food processors to get to know new consumers and also in some cases new wholesale buyers who would like to get more local products onto their shelves. And it's a chance for us to really highlight the excellent and high quality products that we are producing in farms and in processing facilities all over the state. Mm -hmm. And as a state, how would you say that we're doing as far as developing and marketing these products? I think we're making great strides. We have such an excellent variety of products available in the state and we are also we have one of the highest rates of direct marketed <laughs> products in the country so that's sales to CSAs, farm stands and farmers markets. At the same time we are advancing in getting more local products into schools, hospitals and workplaces and currently the Vermont Sustainable Jobs Fund estimates that we are about seven percent of our local of our food sales are local food and that's up from 5% just a few years ago. That's pretty important. Important. It really is. And so can you give me some examples of maybe some of the new areas that, that we're seeing? Great. Um, we definitely are seeing fresh produce, and whether it's produced in greenhouses or in hydroponics, we're seeing season extension, so more fresh produce available in January. We also are seeing a great variety of processed foods, like Adventures in Granola, Mm -hmm. This is a granola that is produced by a nonprofit that provides opportunities to adults with disabilities. And I think that we're seeing overall a greater variety of products that are available all year round. That's great. And a lot of farmers, too, are 
diversifying into these kinds of areas as well. They are. We're seeing a lot of farmers who are producing jams and jellies or relishes, fermented foods, as well as fresh produce and meats and eggs. <laughs> so on Thursday afternoon, January 28th, the winner of this past year's Dairy Farm of the Year will be honored. The winners are the Pike family who own and operate Kiwaden Farm in Stowe. Across the fence is Keith Silva. Spoke to the Pikes about this honor. The Pikes Farm, 135 acres and milk about 90 jerseys. Kiwaden Farm is considered a small farm by Vermont standards, which suits the Pikes quite well. Dairy farming is a really tough business and has been for a long time, but um, it, it works to stay the same size be, for us because we, we have a limited land base and really what we found with a lot of folks that we know that have, that have grown and gotten bigger is that they, it's not a lot of fun for them anymore. Anybody that's left in, in dairying is doing something right, just to be farming in Vermont today because it's, it's a very difficult business in Vermont. It's difficult across the nation. We do a good job because that's important to us. The quality of our milk is important to us. Um, we're glad that the town thinks its farms are important. Um, and we, we are glad that we are able to present a nice looking place to the entrance of the town, but we farm because we want to farm and this is how we want it to be. The Pike family has been farming beside Route 100 in Stowe since 1921. Dan Pike feels a sense of pride and responsibility when he thinks about his family's legacy. I didn't know my great-grandfather, but my grandfather and my father grew up in this town and they've made a real good name for us, I think, and uh, I think that's, I appreciate that, you know, and I try to uphold that, whatever I do, as far as being in this town and, you know, we've been around a long time and uh, it's, it's, I, think, I think we're kind of a staple here in this town. There's a lot of people that appreciate the open lands or there isn't that much of that left anymore. Well, again, our congratulations to the Pikes. Now, Jackie, what kind of recognition will they receive at the farm show? Well, of course, they'll be there in full force, and uh, I'm really excited for them. Pikes have been a, a great family to know over the years, and I think it's wonderful that they've won this award. The um, show will feature, or the, the banquet will feature a um, PowerPoint presentation that, so that folks can actually see their farm. Um, they'll be able to see the robotics that they've put in, which is very exciting. Yeah, if you've never seen that, it's an amazing thing to yeah, see. Yeah, and it, and it also showcases the fact that it, do, it you don't have to be a large farm to put in robotics, which is some one of the pieces of technology that we hope people come and visit. Um, but it's just a really nice connection, and we're very proud of them. And the farm show wouldn't be complete without animals. So of course, you have some animals. We have a few animals this year. Um, we've got honeybees that are coming in, and we've got some goats that are coming in. That we're, they're also going to be part of a special juried fiber show that the Sheep and Goat Association will be hosting. And um, Ann Brown will be bringing her beautiful Morgan horse coming in this year. So getting harder and harder to bring in animals. Um, there's just not a lot of people that are willing to do it. But we're still working on that, because that's the biggest complaint I hear every year is. <laughs> We don't have animals at the farm show. Need more animals. We need more animals. And there's free admission and parking, but you are asking for a donation. Yes, for the last couple of years, we've been very, very proud to partner with the Vermont Food Bank. Um, and last year, we we uh, brought in almost 1,300 pounds of food and about $700 in cash donations. So we're partnering with the Vermont Food Bank as well as the Chitton Emergency Food Shelf um, so that they can alternate pickups. So we would appreciate so anybody bringing in canned or box goods. And of course, good old cash is always welcome for these folks. Mm -hmm. And uh, just talk a little bit about, too, maybe the importance of having this donation made. Well, I think it, it ties in perfectly with the farmers and the farming community. You know, um, our number one purpose in Vermont is to produce food fiber and forest products. And so it makes perfect sense that um, as long as we can afford to have the farm show open and free to the public, that the public, including the farmers and consumers who come in for consumer night, give back to people who, uh, who are our hungry neighbors. And it's just a nice connection. So you can bring food in and then bring products out. Absolutely. <laughs> products and technology and information. <laughs> Great. Well, so uh, uh, that's a canned good or a box good. Yes. Something that's not going to spoil, obviously. Correct. Well, it starts Tuesday, January 26th and runs through Thursday, January 28th at the Champlain Valley Exposition in Essex Junction. For more information on the Farm Show, including the full schedule of events, meetings, and seminars, you can check the website on your screen. It's VT. 
farmshow.com. I want to thank you both for joining us so much and, and bringing these examples of what people can find. I think they'd be surprised at all the variety. I, I think they will be, and I hope that everybody comes next week and just enjoys Vermont agriculture and what we have to offer. Excellent. Thank you so much. Well, thank thanks. you. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.